All right, guys, for the last vending series, vending series three, this is what the uh, cover art looks like on each of these sheets. You can see the uh, Pokemon, uh, some uh, base set cards over there. And, uh, yeah. Let me see how these compare to the uh, others again. Just to give you a comparison, this is vending series two. That's two. That's three. And let me get find one of the original embedding series one. And this is one. Okay. So now we'll get going with vending series uh, three. I'll peel off one of these cards. Um, yeah. It's like a um, way to keep track of the cards you have, I guess. I'm not going to bother um, putting these in sleeves. Or maybe I should actually. Maybe it's I should just consider it part of the series. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna put them in sleeves. What the heck? Marowak. I mean, Cubone. Sorry. Hiding behind the wall because it's very shy. Trainer looks like a uh, I forget what you call it, but the uh, the tower that involves the dead and that has all the uh, ghastlies and haunters in it. Um, Bell Sprout. Oh wow, good. Good thing I peeled that off. Um, yeah, I think this is one of the the most valuable cards from the entire vending series. It's a uh, really really weird Pikachu. <laughs> that was com I think it's the, what makes this card unique is that it was completely hand drawn. That's the background. That's the actual back for this card, and it was completely hand drawn. Including even the borders, you can see they're not perfectly even, and uh, the name, everything was hand drawn, so that's pretty cool. Ghastly. Nice illustration there. Another Cuba. And Weeping Bell. Um, yeah. <laughs> no comment. Same Pokemon, Ghastly, Honder, interesting looking Honder, not my favorite illustration of Honder, but it's nice. Bellsprout. No comment. <laughs> yeah, I remember that guy from the uh, the Game Boy game, the uh, Pokemon trading card Game Boy game for the uh, Game Boy Color. It's like Imakuni or something like that. I can't remember his name. Growlithe. He's definitely a freak though. <laughs> Sleeping Growlithe. Ponyta. Pidgeot, though. All 
a Meowth that looks unconscious with the number 20 on it. <laughs> that makes absolutely no sense to me, but okay. <laughs> I love the uh, inherent weirdness of it. Magmar. Um, Vulpix. Very nice illustration. In the uh, meadows or something. Another Ponyta. Let me for time here. Okay, we got oh, four minutes. Another Vulpix. Another sleeping Growlithe under a table, just like a, a good dog would. And obviously, Growlithe is a dog. I mean, you know, dog like Pokemon. Through the canine. Um, Weezing. Kind of looks uh, like an odd illustration compared to most cards in this series. More of a, like a computer generated look as opposed to like an illustration type of look. I mean, obviously, it is an illustration. Two kids playing the trading card game. And they look like they're about to Rochambeau. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's what they're actually doing, but that's what it looks like. Skyther. They reprinted this in English for the uh, Black Star promo set series. But the vast majority of these cards, as I said before, are only available in Japanese. Kangaskhan. Tauros. By the way, can I just say how awesome it was that they decided to name a Pokemon Kangaskhan after Genghis Khan. That was uh, quite an imagination there. <laughs> Maybe Kangaskhans are native to Mongolia. Um, Venonat. <laughs> Funny looking. Another Genghis Khan. Okay, Genghis Khan. Um, Nidorina. You may notice that there are um, not many Stage 2 Pokemon in the uh, Vending series. I think uh, Polyrath is the uh, only one that I've pulled so far. And there are a bunch of Stage 2s. Um... Holographics, Tauros. The only holographics uh, part of this series, well, it's actually a surprise we're going to get to in a little bit. After Vending Series 3, you'll see what's going on there. Um, that weird dude. Looks like he's wearing a Mickey Mouse costume. Venonat. And Nidorino. Um, okay, I'm going to cut it off there. See you in the next part.